Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Welcome back everyone. We are here live here in Las Vegas for HPE Discover 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Dom Wild, VP of the, and general manager of the Data Center Networking Group at HP Enterprise. Welcome to, back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thanks, Joe. It's good to be here. So we chatted in London. What's changed? You got a new job? I do yeah, have a new job. It. Yeah, yeah. Come so to the cube, uh, <laughs> get promoted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works. It's, uh, no, it's very cool. Uh, about your new job. What's going on? So you know what we've done is uh, we've we've decided to drive some focus in the business in networking. You know, obviously, um, you know now we're a, a year into the Aruba acquisition, and so we got a lot of focus there. Um, now I've been asked to step up and take on the the, the task of focusing our networking strategy around the data, the data center. Uh, and you're forward. the GM, you got P&L responsibility? Yeah. Yep. So Which products, all data center products? For the data center products, that's which, include, which includes our Flex Fabric uh, portfolio of data center products and our Alto line open networking product portfolio as well. So HP always had good, has always had good networking. We've been covering, Dave, ne Dave and I have been covering the networking group for a while. There's been some um, management changes. Obviously Aruba comes in, yep. the leadership, obviously that acquisition we've talked about for over a year now, yep. how great that was, and really good, Dom. Dom was on, Dominic Orr has been on before, great, great guest. What's changing now, because now with net, um, Software Defined Data Center mm -hmm. at the center of this, you're seeing that the fabric of the network is now going to be strategic in how the cloud plays out. Yeah. Certainly in the middleware or wherever in the past layer or yeah. for the data, wherever. Yeah. What is the key threshold issue for enterprises right now with respect to networking? The network needs to get out the way. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the real story. Is that uh, you know the, the networking is has been far too complex for far too long, um, and uh, and the, the real issue is that as you know we increase the pace of moving towards you know cloud networking is something that we call cloud first architecture. Um, being able to you know take take customers you know cloud first so that they design the network um, from the ground up to to enable cloud. Um, there's a bunch of challenges there. You know, you've got reliability issues. You've, you've got to make sure it's secure. You've got to make sure it's easy and simple to deploy. Um, you've got to make sure that your operational model is now simplified enough because the other pressure that comes with moving to cloud is there's expectations that the, the operational costs will reduce as well. So you've got to do more with less. One of the biggest issues is that you know it's it, it's the demands of knowledge workers who are, are really demanding that you know applications be able to be deployed rapidly to support what they're doing, um, and that line of business managers yeah. are actually insisting that you know they have a say in in the IT decisions around infrastructure and in that. Yeah. So in the old days, the control point, the control plane was networking, moving packets around, pretty standard stuff. Yeah. Now, and that was during the days of best of breed, as as we heard earlier. Yeah. But now, when you hear about converged going to the next level, yeah. and composable infrastructure. Yep. Those yep. are kind of generic, categorical words. That means the network has to essentially be agile. Yeah. Absolutely. With the with the above that stack has got to be agile too, yeah. right? So, how does that work? What's the how do you get the network out of the way? Well, you can't just move the network out of the way. <laughs> I mean, how do you no. get the network out of the way to make it more efficient? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not about, uh, I mean, I say get the network out of the way. It, it's really about changing um, the paradigms of the past. I mean, everything was very CLI driven, so you end up with these very heavy scripts, and um, you, you have to, in, the, net, the network was very static. You had to envision what you wanted the network to be, you know, for the future and over a long period of time. So as you could establish VLANs and, and ACLs and, and you know, all of these other static paradigms. What we need is we need a network to be more dynamic. We need it to be responsive and we need it to be agile. And so, you know, one of the, the concepts that, you know, we promote in our composable infrastructure is that we actually present infrastructure as code. So as application developers are developing their applications, they actually view the infrastructure, including the network, as simply a, a code library or a line of code that gets compiled into that application. Based on what the workload wants it to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What so configured appropriately for that workload. So, right. so you kind of had consumerization of, of, of IT and then you obviously mobile comes in and, and we've been talking for years about the flattening of the network and traffic yeah. moving east-west. Is it fair to say that the data consumption patterns have far outstripped the infrastructure's ability to, yeah. to keep up? 
And, and what will change that, if, if anything? How will that change? Well, I think it's, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, as we're just addicted to data, right? I mean, it's, you know, it's ever increasing. So, you know, the, the bisectional bandwidth that you see happening in the data center is just, is just growing and growing and growing, um, you know, which is why one of the announcements we made today was around, you know, that, that we're, we're announcing that we have a full portfolio of server NICs and switches, et cetera, to satisfy the move to 25 and 100 gig because we're taking that next sort of you know, step up in bandwidth. Um, but it's not going to stop. I mean, we'll continue to, to grow. Um, you know, while we're addicted to data, while we're storing more data, while you know, applications are really the, you know, the tool set that's driving our, our sort of work product, nothing's going to change. So what we need is we need a network that's easily transformed to be able to incorporate more and more bandwidth. Um, but at the same time, that's easier to secure and it's easier to, to drive by policy, basically. So the customer problem there is, I, Tom, I don't want to rip and replace. How can you help yeah. me? So it's, you know, at the end of the day, there, there is always going to be some, you know, hardware that needs to be replaced. But, but one of the things that, you know, we've seen happen is when we transition from sort of where the one gig, 10 gig world we were in, we moved to 10 gig and 40 gig in the data center. And one of the things we had to do there was replace cabling. Um, because we were trying to take four 10 gig feeds and bring them into a single 40 gig feed. And so you had four strands of fiber coming down into a single 40 gig connection. So th there was some you know, heavy lifting there in terms of changing cabling. Now we're moving from to 25 and 100 gig, well, you've got four 25s make 100, so you don't have to do the cabling again. So, you know, so that simplified things, um, uh, and that helps a lot. So we'll see a faster transition to 2500 gig than we saw to 10 and 40. Um, we think three years versus five years. Um, but the other thing that, you know, that we can do is in simplifying the operational model, um, in using things like network virtualization, the network virtualization overlays, and also using fabric technologies in the underlay, we can insert new physical bandwidth capacity into the network that, that just gets auto-configured within the fabric, and then that's easily consumed in an operational model by a network virtualization overlay. So we're actually moving towards the, you know, the position now where we'll be able to sort of signal the, the network manager that, you know, hey, you're trying to put another application on. I don't quite have the bandwidth to be able to do that. Insert more, you know, in more bandwidth. And then, you know, and then run the application over that new bandwidth. And then boom, in comes IoT. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah. So the, the big question that everyone has when they talk about this sounds all great. I want end-to-end -end visibility on everything. Yeah. So if things are that dynamic, that crazy, how the heck do you figure out the management side of it? Can you yeah. share some insight into the visibility act, uh, angle on that? Yeah, it's um, it, it's definitely a challenge. Um, one of the uh, one of the areas that uh, you know we're looking at is is having more uh, policy driven. Um, what you want to do is you want to unlock unlock the context that the network already holds. The network already knows a tremendous amount about what is going on. It's a question of unlocking it and exposing it, and doing that in a way that's consumable. So, so what you want to do is actually create business level policies that say, hey, I want to you know, connect server A to storage B, um, and, and then I want to be able to monitor that the only thing that's talking to storage B is server A, um, and, and do that on an ongoing basis. So you want to you take that metadata, and you want to be able to you know, constantly look at that, uh, make sure that the policy you've deployed is, is, the, is the right policy. Um, but we'd, we've made great strides there. I mean, you know, we've got you know, big data capabilities, big data analytics capabilities that we can now bring in on the back end. Um, without overburdening sort of the compute in the switching environment. You know, we can just take that metadata and go, you know, go look at that offline and, and tie that back to the policies that we deployed. So I want to ask you kind of a philosophical question since you know, now a big executive running a P&L. We talked about the iPhone earlier that they brought a computer to the phone, yeah. not a phone to the computer. So it's a computer that has software to run a phone. So the question is, when will the data center be running the devices? So take IoT, because that's a big yeah. thing that comes up is, do you want to move the data back and forth? So since the density issue is coming down so slow, you can actually have a very small, yeah. compact box that can be like a data center. Yeah. How does the network fit into that, that concept? Because we love that concept, pushing data center-like functionality out to an oil rig or uh, the edge of the network. 
Yeah, it's it's yeah. So the question is, do you, do you bring the data to the data center, or do you bring the data center to the device? I it's, like the data uh, center to the device. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be shifting around, you know, huge amounts of uh, of data that you don't have to. If you can actually bring the compute capability, you know, closer to the device, um, and at least do a first level of processing. Um, at, at the device, that that's absolutely the way to go. A cherry picking model, and then yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think it's you know it's somewhat dependent. You know, when you look at the sort of you know the IoT landscape, um, you know, I think IoT is going to segment as well. Uh, I, you know, we we talk about IoT as just this this big sea of things. I don't think it is a big sea of things. I think there are you know there are different devices and there are different use cases that will emerge. Um, that will need different compute models and different data. Yeah, there's windmills, there's factories, there's cars. Yeah, there's, yeah. But, the, but does that change? The, my, my question, though, really kind of comes down to like the open question of, does that change the nature of networking paradigm? So if you got pro programmable infrastructure, yeah. is, is it stateful, stateless? How do you? I mean, it seems like a very, you know, complicated environment. Or do you have an I, opinion on that yet? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, the, the fundamental definition of networking is, you know, is connectivity. Um, I, I think what we have proven is over the past, you know, decade or more, that the, the network can do so much more than connectivity. Um, the, the network can give you insight, can give you context. And so, yes, it will change the nature of, of, of networking. Um, I think, you know, networking has subsumed more and more functionality. Uh, and I think we'll continue to do so. Security is, is one of the big things, is you, do you need separate security devices or does the network do the security for you? And I think you know, we've got a lot of SDN models that are showing that through things like micro-segmentation, the network can actually be the security uh, enforcer that you need. Um, and you, know, you tie that to a, a very powerful and simple uh, policy model, you know, the network becomes the, the security model. As so well. network becomes the perimeter security, then you can focus other resources on whatever, analytics for well, detection, it, remediation. Yeah, it's not necessarily the perimeter model. I think the perimeter goes away. I mean, I think in all circumstances. Yeah, I however think that's defined, right. It's, yeah, sure. it's, it becomes a, a case of, you know, whether you're in the branch or the campus or, or the data center, uh, it becomes about the perimeter becomes as big as the device. It's self-defining. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it's, okay. Um, but the network is is the, the the one thing that's a common denominator in everything you do in a compute infrastructure is the network. It connects everything. Um, it's either going to do that wirelessly or wired. Whether you're in the data center or the campus, it doesn't matter. So so, so that's the common so denominator. Talk about that yeah. common denominator. How that translates to digital transformation, because we were talking before we came on camera that the digitization of everything is yeah. driving a lot of the, the growth that you're seeing. Yeah. What can you share? for the audience out there that you've seen specifically around this digitization trend? So, I mean, I think there's, there's some really interesting use cases. I mean, you mentioned earlier on the car industry. Um, you know, I, you know I, I have a car that probably has more computers in it than I have in my office. Um, and, you know, and what car companies are doing now in terms of, you know, offering the, the service to their customers, you know, you run Wi-Fi in your car, your car auto, uh, auto diagnoses itself, it can uh, notify you that, the, you know, the, some part is failing and then you need to, you know, get it into the dealership or, you know, whatever it is. Or download it. Or, yeah, or download, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, if you look at what Tesla is yeah, doing, yeah, exactly. you know, download your new update and you've upgraded the capability. Um, you know, if I, if I didn't, you know, buy a particular feature when I bought the car and I find six months later I want it, hey, I just pay the money and download it. Um, it's mm -hmm. great, um, but but though, you know there's there's really interesting use cases like that where you know yeah we're digitizing and disrupting everything. I mean people used to talk about fridges and things. I think cars are more interesting than fridges, but yeah, of course, know, hey. yeah. I'm gonna, they all know that I roll through all those stop signs in Palo Alto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I never stopped that car, so the <laughs> instrumentation picked that up. My you got the autonomous get, car coming yeah, for you, John. Thank God, take I, care of that. I need that. Yeah. Um, I won't say it. It's going to say something, but. <laughs> uh, only, since we're live TV, we won't get in trouble. <laughs> Leonard's saying, go for it. <laughs> we're not going to get crazy predictions that got me in trouble last time. Um, Dom, final question. I, wanna, I want you to spend a minute okay. to highlight the latest innovations that you guys are launching here today yeah. uh, in, the, in data center, cloud first. What are, what are some of the key things, products, technologies sure. that you're launching and talking about here at yeah. HPE Discover? 
So I mentioned earlier the full set of 2,500 gig technologies. So that's you know in, in concert with the, the server team as well. And being the number one you know server vendor, it, we you know we can help to sort of drive the adoption of those 25 gig technologies. So that that's one. Um, the other is we've taken our intelligent management center management platform and we've integrated that with HPE OneView 3.0. So in our composable infrastructure environment, um, integrating those two things extends. The, the reach and capability uh, in terms of you know, the depth of networking functionality that can be offered in composable infrastructure. And then you know, finally, um, as we move into the new brave age of containers, um, we've taken our network virtualization solution, which is uh, called DCN, and we've integrated uh, Docker container capability there, so that what we can do is, is, you know, is track and do sort of admission control and policy on containers as you know they, they pop up and disappear because they're very temporal in nature, and so that is a that is a problem we're trying to get our arms around before it becomes a problem before we see the you know the explosion in containers. So you know those are the the, the three sort of major things that are network related that we've we've announced today. Dom Weil, VP and General Manager of Data Center Networking here inside theCUBE. Join the conversation. We're three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is still on day one. We've got a couple more interviews to do, but two more days of live coverage. Go to our CrowdChat at crowdchat.net slash HPE Discover. Join the conversation. We're having a big threaded conversation over there. And of course, go to crowdpages.co slash HPE Discover and check out our new digital experience site we're pushing out there today. And of course, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle for the videos, siliconangle.com, wikibon.com, siliconangle.tv for all the coverage. And uh, we're here live, the Cube at HP Discover live in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. You're watching theCUBE.